This episode is brought to you by my clothing brand, Son of Man. You can go check it out. Season 2, we just launched it through the show notes in the description or go to sonofmanskate.co.nz and check it out. Hey, what is going on everybody and welcome back to the first official episode of the Son of Man podcast and in today's episode I basically want to get started with just saying what my goals are for this clothing brand and essentially sort of break down some of the business like behind the scenes stuff like this isn't the goal of like I want to uh, like eliminate homelessness from New Zealand which is one of them and that's like one I'll promote and that's like one of the, those big goals but how do I actually plan on getting there is what I want to talk about in this episode. My three uh, sort of behind the scenes business goals and plans is, is more strategies actually, but my goal is to use these strategies more. So anyway, uh, this is probably just going to be a shorter podcast, but anyway, I just thought we'd get straight into it. And the first strategy that I want to use is to, well, I wrote it as making brand more personal to me. That's a terrible way of wording it. Basically, what that means is basically just opening the curtain, revealing what's behind the curtain is like um, what I want to do more. So by vlogging more, pod, doing these podcasts, um, being more active on social media, I basically just want to create a whole bunch of content that shows you guys exactly how we do everything, what's going on behind the scenes, let you guys learn a little bit more about me because as I said in the episode number zero, is that I feel like I connect with the brands the most where I understand who created the brand, why they created it, what they're doing, what's happening behind the scenes, where my order is getting packed, what's happening, and just sort of all of that, I find that, well, personally, I find that really interesting. I don't know about you guys, but that's who I really connect with the most. Like, that's why I'd much rather go and uh, buy from brands like who I know, like, they're on the smaller side, but they, like, vlog and they do podcasts, because I just feel like I know them, like, personally, even though I don't, I got no idea who they, well, like, I've never met them is what I'm trying to say, but I feel like I have this, like, real connection with them, and so that's why I'm trying to uh, now get into that space and create all this content and let you guys see what's going on in the hopes that we'll connect more and you guys will get to know me more and kind of, like, act like we know each other, which is really weird. I don't know if I worded that weirdly, but that's sort of what my plan is, and hopefully from this podcast you can see that like, I'm just being real, like, my plan is to, like, grow a brand that, like, makes a real tangible difference in this world, and I'm going to be talking about, like, how I get there, I'm not going to be all pretty, like, hey, we're, like, doing all this amazing stuff, like, nah, this podcast is going to be real, man, just talk about what's going on, what, the stuff I shank, the stuff that I do good, like, I'll talk about anything in order just to share my experiences, and even if you guys are trying to launch a brand or do anything businessy, then maybe you might learn something. And before I go into my second goal, I realized I forgot to mention why I have these three goals or strategies. And that's basically, again, I mentioned it, uh, sorry, I mentioned it in episode zero of um, this podcast. Um, I read a book by Bob Iger, it's like his auto, I don't know if I call it autobiography, yeah, it's kind of an autobiography, basically talks about his life and his, um, his journey up to being the CEO of Disney, and as you guys know, probably, I don't know when this is going to be released, but as of a few days, oh, it would have been probably a few weeks ago by the time this was released, that he ended up uh, stepping down from Disney, but he's been the CEO for quite a long time, he's the one who acquired Pixar, uh, Marvel, Star Wars, and Fox and everything, did all of that, turned Disney into like this freaking powerhouse, and so I thought it'd be real interesting to learn about how he did it, what his, uh, just basically about him, and so essentially he was like, I think he was like the chair the chairman, is that the right thing? He was like one of the top dogs who wasn't the CEO. I think it was like the second in command basically of Disney at this point, uh, working under the CEO. And so when the CEO basically got kicked out, the original one, um, well, not the original, not Walt Disney, but the one before Bob Iger, um, he had to like do all this pitching in front of the board and everything about how he wanted to be CEO and what he was going to do. And so he came up with like this huge list of like strategies and like, he didn't want to focus on the past because there had been like some, not controversy, but Disney animation was just kind of shanking it a little bit and they were doing bad. And when da- Disney animation does bad, like that flows on to all the other things like their uh, consumer products and their parks. Because if the movies suck, then like everything else sort of like takes a hit. So he didn't want to focus on the past. He wanted to focus on the future. And he had like this massive list on how he was going to do that. But he talked to someone and he's like, nah, man, like, you got to just choose three things. It doesn't, you don't need to decide today, but you just got to pick three things 
that you think are going to be the most important and just prioritize those three things. So that's why I came up with, oh, I didn't come up, but that's why I decided to come up with three strategies on how I'm going to take my personal uh, brand to the, like the next level and make it successful, hopefully in the future. So anyway, my second goal for Son of Man, oh, sorry, my second strategy for Son of Man, I called it an Evernote, which is like my note-taking software, flood the local New Zealand market, which is basically go all in on New Zealand. And that doesn't mean we're not shipping to other countries, we're still shipping worldwide. But the problem I realized was I've only got a limited budget for advertising. And so we're not like at an IQ or Google level where if we want to like advertise, we just go worldwide, bang out like this massive campaign. Um, like we just simply don't have the budget for that, obviously. So I thought I originally started off advertising to like the big five countries that everyone does on Facebook, which is the United Kingdom, United States, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. But then I realized there's so much more advantages and it's going to be so much easier to sell in New Zealand. One, because I understand the culture, but two, big, uh, because the consumers don't need to pay for shipping. Oh, well, at least if they do, it's like real cheap. It's like a few dollars. Whereas if I shipped internationally, it's like really expensive, like 20 bucks. Like that's how much it costs me. And so naturally it just flows on to the consumer. And also then it takes like a week or two to ship internationally. Whereas uh, here locally in New Zealand, it take, it's like overnight shipping. So I'll create the order and basically the courier, uh, the courier company comes the next day. And then the day after, then they should have their package basically. So there's a whole bunch of advantages to just focusing on one market essentially because it's easier for me to get people to buy in New Zealand because, again, the lower costs and the quicker ship times. And it's also easier just for me to focus on one, like, demographic, if that's the right word, just on one community. If I can, like, for example, if I could build a brand and get people to buy my products and, like, a small community or just in a city and then all of a sudden people start, like, seeing them around then that creates word of mouth so much quicker compared to if I sell a few shirts in New Zealand, a few in Australia, a few in the US, you know, and it just gets stretched out. Where if I like sell all of them in like this tight kit, tight knit community, like real locally, then it starts to get moved around a little bit more and sales can grow that way. And then somewhere in the future, we can go more into international markets. And eventually, eventually what I would like to do is like create warehouses in different countries. So for example, if you're in the United States, then the shirts will be shipping from within the United States and so everything will ship like locally and it'll be cheaper and it'll be less shipping times but that's like long term that's not going to be happening anytime soon and so anyway my third goal of how I'm going to plan at least on growing sort of man is by creating high quality branded content and basically why I'm doing this is for a couple of reasons is this is what Bob Iger said in his book of on how he planned to grow Disney that's one of his three uh, strategies and that's he ended up being CEO so you know Anyway, but um, anyway, Gary V said, uh, what did he say? He said that all businesses nowadays in the modern world are basically media companies now. What, whatever industry or niche or whatever they're in, all businesses should be media companies first and they should be creating just tons of content, basically like 30 pieces of content across all the different social media platforms every day at least. And so that's one of the aims I'm trying to get to. I'm trying to uh, produce more and more content every day and see how much I can produce that's not just quantity but quality first maybe or at least just quality enough that people enjoy it. I don't know I'm still seeing testing stuff out testing strategies seeing what works um he also said that attention is the new currency of the internet so how how much attention you can get from people not like attention seeking that's not what I'm meaning but how much you can hold someone's attention and like work with them and um network with them and give value to someone all that is super important to growing a business nowadays in the new social media world and age and everything so that's why i'm going really hard on producing not just quantity but also quite high quality content that's why i'm doing this podcast right now it's one of the strategies i'm testing out vlogs are another avenue i want to go down uh blogging eh, blogging is kind of boring for me it's not really what i'm looking at but just social media podcasting vlogging that's sort of like the route i'm thinking of going so anyway guys these have been my three strategies and uh, plans on how I'm going to grow my social media company. As I said in the old podcast, I'm really trying to get on the new and noteworthy pages of all the different podcasting platforms. So if you could help me out, that would be an amazing one. Just by listening to this podcast, that's amazing. Also subscribing, you might as well. It'll come up in your feed whenever I release a new podcast, so you might as well do that. But another few things you can do is uh, leave a five-star review. That would be amazing. That's probably one of the biggest things 
And I th- actually, I think that's it. Just leave a review and subscribe. And while you're at it, chuck a cheeky screenshot of this podcast on your story and we'll share it. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for listening to episode number one. Uh, we're going to be diving deep into some other stuff, some other stuff I'm passionate about, books I've been reading, uh, more business stuff, more personal stuff. We're going to be doing all sorts of stuff in the next few episodes. So make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.